I'm John Cromaldi. I am a professor at the University of Colorado Boulder, and I am the lead PI on the Odor to Action Network. The Odor to Action Network is trying to solve really a fundamental problem in neuroscience, which is how do animals take odor stimulus from the environment around them and use that information in their brains to make behavioral decisions. Odor and, and the sense of smell is really quite mysterious compared to other senses of compared to vision or hearing. We know much less about it, and yet our sense of smell is really remarkable. Our sense of smell allows us to do things that no device that has ever been made can do. And we don't understand how it happens. But there's new technologies in neuroscience, but also in mathematics and computer science that finally enable us to try and make progress in this from a, a really broad interdisciplinary nature. It's a complicated problem, so we need people with different skill sets, different areas of expertise. My name is Betty Hong. Uh, I'm an assistant professor of neuroscience at Caltech. I'm Kathy Nagel. I'm an associate professor at NYU School of Medicine. I'm Brian Smith. I'm a professor in the School of Life Sciences at Arizona State University. I'm a professor at the Salk Institute for Biological Studies. I'm at the University of Hertfordshire in the UK and I'm professor of neural computation. Um, my name is Kate Cochran and I'm the project manager for the Odor to Action Network. Odor to Action is a, is a big network of 16 PIs across the globe, right, in Canada and in the U.S., of course, and uh, in the U.K. A project of this scale you know, really can't happen in an individual research laboratory. It really requires bringing together people with different areas of expertise, different interests, um, and, and that's a fundamental part of team science. Team science is kind of the next frontier in um, our in our scientific effort. As we're doing team science, we're also trying to study team science. And the goal is that if we do team science well, that we hope to transform the state of knowledge on this problem in a way that's greater than what we could do individually as individual scientists. The Odor to Action Network is divided up into three teams, and each of those teams is interdisciplinary in its own right. I lead interdisciplinary group one in the Odor to Action Network. Uh, our group is focused on sensory coding. Broadly speaking, we're interested in how our brains create internal representations of the world around us based on the information we receive through our five senses. My job is to bring advanced statistical methods to help us understand coordinates in the olfactory space and how they are related to important behavioral uh, variables for the animal. My lab specifically focuses on how odors are represented in the brains of um, the fruit fly Drosophila melanogaster. For instance, we use tiny glass electrodes or powerful microscopes to measure electrical activity in the brains of the fly while they're experiencing different odors. I lead IRG2 and the goal of IRG2 is to try to understand the, the circuits it's a big chain. Uh, it starts from you know outside in the in the outside world where the odor is. Um, it it's goes through various stages of processing within our brain, and then ultimately leads us to you know contract a muscle to uh, to to move or to uh, turn our head or something like that. And, and tracking this information throughout that entire chain is really the, the role of IRG2. One of the things that we're working on is the ability to image the activity of neurons in the brain while the flies are performing this kind of navigation task. And so what we've set up is kind of a, a virtual reality uh, for flies where they can control the wind direction around them and the odors that they perceive depend on how they move through the environment. And then we're interested in how um, neurons at different levels of the brain are representing and transforming information in order to allow them to navigate. I lead IRG3, which is a, a research group that's focused around what we call active sensing. Active sensing is how animals' uh, movements can enhance their ability to detect and locate odors. In particular, we are taking the results from the neuroscientific part of the project and translate them into algorithms for technological solutions for example, for robots um, and for electronic gnosis. When it comes to collaborative science, it's just great to have the experts all on the table. Now with John Primaldi's lab, there's an expert lab in turbulence research, and we learn so much from them 
and so much about how to think about olfaction. We're using laser-based technologies to render odor plumes, which are typically invisible, to make them visible. And once they're rendered visible by using lasers, we can then use scientific cameras to both visualize and quantify how these odor fields develop in both space and time. I think the most fun part of being involved with this team science project has been just learning from other people. We have you know, people who are hardcore fluid dynamicists and people who are you know, molecular biologists and um, really trying to understand and bring their different tool sets to bear on, on a um, unified set of problems. And this is just so great to make scientific progress because you don't have to read 10 scientific papers first in order to learn something. You can just ask the people. I like to think of team science sometimes as an orchestra where you have all the different sections working on their own parts, they're playing their own instruments, but it's in this really uh, collaborative and harmonious way that in the end you produce this piece that's beautiful and it's just more than the sum of its parts.